It's October 2nd, 1980. Ali fights Larry Holmes. We go to Albany, New York. We live in Cassidy. We go 30 miles north to Albany, New York, and we watch it on pay-per-view. After the fight, we got in the car. No one talked. So we drove 30 miles back to Catskill. We all opened the door. We all went to our rooms. We never talked. The next morning, Cuss is on the phone with Muhammad Ali. Cuss is calling Larry home so many bad. How do you let that bum hit on you, Chad Ali? How do you the bum? Why you let that bum beat on you? Know, Cuss, he's almost getting sensitive, you know, emotional. Why is the bum almost crying? This a bum. Why you let him hit you? Why you let him beat her? So I talked to Ali on the phone. Then when I get big, I'm going I'm to get him for you. I'm going to revenge you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to restore your honor. After a career outlasting and enduring some of the hardest punchers and some of the most brutal fights, Ali had finally fallen off completely. He had trouble coordinating the muscles he used in speech. The Parkinson's had begun to take hold. His kidneys were failing. His own doctor quit his corner rather than have anything to do with it. Larry Holmes learned at the sight of the great as a sparring partner. But the time had come to step out of Ali's shadow and into the spotlight. It came to a head in 1980 when Larry got his shot at the title. That same legendary stubbornness that kept Clay in wars as a young man was still keeping Ali in fight after fight as an old one. There comes a point where enough is enough. For Ali, Manila and Joe Frazier were enough five years earlier. Now, the student had grown into the master, the master into a frail old man. Ali took a hellish beating for far longer than the world could stand to watch. Legends die hard, and Ali is learning that even he cannot be forever young. Nobody was happy about it, least of all, Larry Holmes. He'd asked the ref to stop it and even cried during a post-fight interview. Really respect Ali a whole lot. It hurt you to punish him that way, didn't it? I feel that he fought one of the baddest heavyweight in the world today, and you cannot take credit from him. The love for Muhammad Ali overflowed out many eyes that night. It was in upstate New York in the Catskills where a teenage mutant ninja person is brooding. Mike Tyson was adopted by Customata. Cus had been training champions since the 50s. Floyd Patterson was the youngest heavyweight champion ever at age 21. As an older fighter, Floyd and Cus fought Ali twice. Falling short both times. Now Ali wants to punish him. You see it? They are right above us. Ali is after. Less than a half. Oh, now. A minute Patterson lands a blow. Ali punishes. Stopping the fight. Patterson doesn't want it stopped. But they're right, they're stopping it for the protection of the lad himself. Ali was stripped of his title for refusing to fight in Vietnam. Badly in need of money, an idea hits him. Ali calls Cus. They create a documentary called AKA Cassius Clay, which was two hours of Cus and Ali verbally sparring over hypothetical fights between Ali and past champions. At one point, the sparring goes physical, and Cus manages to land a jab on a chastened Ali. Cus told Ali he'd lose to Joe Frazier. As usual, Cus was right. Coming up for round 13.
Again, Ali calls Cuss. This time, from a hotel in Zaire, the night before his immortal performance in the rumble in the jungle. In a rare moment of shaken confidence, Ali asked his old friend how to handle the wrecking machine. Cuss told Ali bullies don't like getting stood up to. He told Ali to hit Foreman hard early to get his respect. All those legendary lead right hands Ali landed early were a result of that conversation. Back in 1980, the morning after the most tragic fight where nobody died, Ali calls his old friend once more. Mike overhears Cuss getting emotional. I'm on the phone, I'm crying, and he was saying, but I said, when I get big, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get him for you, I'm gonna revenge you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna restore your honor. From that moment on, Mike Tyson was focused on nothing but beating Larry Holmes like a dog in the street. Under Cuss's perceptive gaze, Tyson perfected the peekaboo style. It was a style made for Tyson 30 years before he was alive. It emphasized head movement and pressure-based counterpunching. It allowed a shorter man to get up close and murderous on the inside. At the time, the heavyweight division was full of tall jabbers. It turned an opponent's every jab into an opportunity to counter. Mike did not need to land much to end a fight. When you combine that with Mike's natural ferocity, he became a generational recipe distilled for destruction. On the other hand, Larry was a gritty champion with a genius jab. Unforgiven by the fans for his vivisection of Ali, Larry did all he could. He rose to the championship occasion in an epic 15-round war with Ali's old rival, Ken Norton, to take the title. Not even that could put aside anger of the Legion of Ali fans. Larry got bitter. Fans weren't shy about their dislike of him. Larry was more than happy to clap back. Holmes had his undefeated streak broken by Michael Spinks. He'd come up from light heavyweight to win a tight decision and the championship ending Larry's run at Rocky Marciano's record. After losing an even tighter decision in the rematch, Larry retires furious in 1986. It appeared Tyson would never get the chance to avenge his idol. In Slither's Don King, $3 million and a title shot at Tyson proved too good for Larry to pass on. He was 38 years old and had been retired for two years. The chip on his shoulder and zeros in his bank account were too big to ignore. Against everyone's better judgment, Larry, just like Ali before him, couldn't turn down one last fight against a killer. Ali made the trip and was introduced before the fighters. Before he left the ring, he leaned in and reminded Tyson what he promised years ago he hadn't forgotten. And then January 22nd, I'm fighting him, and then Ali comes into the ring and says, get him for me. He's going to be in there with a beef. I'm an experienced, professional fighter. I am no kid. I do not play. So if he wants to fight any way he wants to fight, I am capable of fighting any way anybody wants to fight. Tyson took his first chunks out of Larry's ribcage as he tried to circle off the ropes. Is Tyson boring in? Look at the look on Larry's face. He looks almost in total fear. Larry was a former Penn State champion wrestler. And against Mike Tyson, his grappling pedigree 
was the only thing that kept him standing. Brilliant defense. Mike really hasn't been able to catch him much yet. Larry Holmes had the best jab in boxing history, and Mike made getting around it look easy. In round four, Tyson landed the straight right that made his words come true. Tyson swarmed on Holmes and finished the old man quickly. It was the only knockout of Larry Holmes's career. somebody like Ali, what's somebody that's really the real deal? Then I know I'm not great. When you see greatness, then you know that's not me. That's just my ego. No, that's just my ego. Ali will fight you till he die. You have to kill him. He's not going to quit. I want to believe that I'm that guy. My ego tells me that, but the reality of it is that I love my beautiful wife. I love this life that I have. I can do almost anything. And I might, I might not want to give this up just to prove that I'm a tough guy. But I'll leave wood. That's what I know. Everybody can call me what they want and this and that. I'm no greater than Mike as I am, but I know. I know what greatness is. I know what real greatness is.